and I'll be providing a brief overview of the Wound Compass Clinical Support App, or CSA. A few important points to share before I get started. The app does not require user login and patient information is not entered or stored in the app. When the assessment is complete, the information is no longer available. On the summary page, which is the page with instructions for managing the wound, there is an option to save the assessment and treatment recommendations as a PDF document and share. The shared content may be used as notes for documentation, or it may be shared with the wound specialist or with the patient's primary care provider. In addition to providing instructions for wound management, the CSA will also instruct the user to consult the wound specialist for assessments that include bio burden or suspected biofilm, infection, whether classic signs or signs of spreading infection, non-viable tissue, slough and eschar, or no progress after two weeks of treatment. The CSA is not a documentation tool. Therefore, it employs only the components of the assessment that are necessary for wound treatment and recommendation. Now, the app will be customized with language and terminology that's appropriate for your geographical location. For example, uh, pressure ulcer versus pressure injury. A few things before I get started on the home screen, you'll see settings and resources at the top of the page. I'll come back to those later. But notice the book icon at the top right. That will remain throughout the assessment and will animate if there's additional information available during the assessment. There's also an onboarding tutorial that will guide the user through the first assessment only. If the user wants that um, onboarding tutorial, they can go into settings and bring that back up. So I will start the assessment by tapping the arrow next to start wound assessment. This will take us to our first question. Where's the wound located? Since this is not a documentation tool, we really only want to know um, the important locations. So um, at or above the knee and below the knee. Um, this serves two purposes. Um, the next screen will ask the user to identify the wound type or etiology. And if they've selected above or at the knee, it will eliminate those arterial, venous, and neuropathic ulcers. You can see here, oh, the other purpose is that um, it's, it's for debridement because we know that, for example, dry intact eschar on the lower leg may not be debrided if there's no arterial um, adequate arterial flow. So I'm going to tap below the knee so that you can see here and the app um, provides assessment and treatment for some of the most commonly seen chronic wounds as well as skin tears. I'm going to go back and choose above or at the knee and you can see that those lower extremity ulcers have been eliminated. Here I'm going to tap pressure injury and you can see that there are images um, as well as a definition here for a pressure injury. If they know that they're dealing with a uh, pressure injury, the user just simply confirms. And because it's a pressure injury, it must be classified, right? Uh, and you can see this has stages. This was developed for a US user. Um, so if I go down to say unstageable, you can see images of uh, unstageable pressure injuries. I'm gonna go back and tap stage four. So here again, you see these examples. I'm gonna confirm, and that will take us to the next question. What represents the majority of the wound? Now, if we were documenting the wound, of course, we would use percentages of each tissue type or wound appearance. But here, because the um, app is prioritizing treatment, we need to prioritize the, the wound tissue or appearance. So this is broken into non-viable tissue, eschar or slough separately, again, for debridement purposes. The app includes bio burden or suspected biofilm because we know that is a challenge for non-wound specialists. And then of course, healthy granulation tissue. To give you an idea of the suspected biofilm, if I tap there, you can see examples of the characteristics associated with biofilm. Maybe the nurse uh, is not familiar with hypergranulation. The user can click on that topic and see examples. 
and read information about it. They can also tap one of the images to make it larger and even pinch it out with their fingers to get a closer look. So for this assessment, I'm gonna choose healthy granulation and confirm. The next question is about the exudate level. This is pretty straightforward. The user taps the one they suspect, confirms it by reading the information there. And then the last question is about wound depth. And this is not about measurement, but this is helping the app uh, to guide treatment uh, based on whether the wound needs a wound filler or does not. And here I'm gonna choose shallow. It will take us to a screen here that, uh, where I'll need to confirm everything that I've just selected. And if I accidentally tapped any wrong answer or assessment finding, I can use the arrow at the top left to go back. But I'm gonna confirm here and it will take me to the product selection. Now the choices listed here are pre-populated by the wound specialist. They may be Smith & Nephew brand or they may be other brands. Um, in this case, there were two options for this particular assessment for this user. Um, I'm gonna tap a leave in life and it will take me to the summary page saying, here's what you need to do to treat this wound. You are using a leave in life foam dressing. If I want to know more about the dressing, I can tap on that box to read more. And then down below, there are instructions for um, the dressing procedure, including the importance of reassessing and if no progress after two weeks to consult the wound specialist. Below the wound treatment, there's guidance for treating a pressure injury. Here, um, there's guidance for treating whatever wound type is selected at the beginning of the assessment. And this is information in addition to the wound treatment itself. So you can see here, there's information here about treating the pressure injury. And this is where at the bottom of the page, the user can save as a PDF and share that information. I won't send it right now. On this page, I'll take this opportunity to talk about the book icon at the top right. If I tap here, there's information about holistic patient health and wound management, as well as tips for teaching the patient if they're gonna be changing the dressing themselves. I'll tap holistic patient health, and you can see this goes through the A, B, C, D, E approach to the time clinical decision support tool. At the very bottom, I can exit here, and that takes me back to the home screen. Under resources on the top right, the user can find the references that were used for this app, as well as some theory and terminology. The theory and terminology are used in the pop-ups throughout the uh, assessment. But if I tap there, you can see there's an alphabetized glossary here of terminology. So maybe, or you can even search here. So maybe I search for, you know, peri wound skin health. Here we go. Information about how to protect from moisture associated skin damage or from um, medical adhesive related skin injury. So we'll go out of there and back to the home screen where we'll tap settings. This is where the user can repeat the onboarding experience. You can see the formulary that's being used as well as licenses, terms and conditions and privacy for this app. So I thank you for your time. I hope this overview has been helpful.